NFL is filled with some of the world's most explosive and physically gifted athletes. Even in the land of Titans, some players have made us reimagine what we thought was humanly possible. Yeah. These players have size, strength, and speed combinations that look like they were made in a laboratory. Today, <laughs> we have the 10 biggest freaks of nature in NFL history. Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson. There was nobody like this guy. Royals GM Art Stewart once said, you have to rub your eyes to believe what you're seeing. The legend of Bo Jackson is best told through quotes of those that saw the phenomenon firsthand. His folklore grows with every story. More and more jaw-dropping fables have come out throughout the years. Frank White said that he really did play baseball with Superman. What After the hell? Heisman and starring in three sports at Auburn, Bo entered the NFL Draft. Now the biggest urban legend in NFL history, Jackson ran a 40-yard dash and a scout clocked 4.12 seconds. No way. And he's a massive guy, so yeah. to be doing them speeds... He's got power, doesn't power, he? Power, speed, everything. Yeah. Sounds unreal. It's because the fastest time ever clocked at the NFL Combine is 4.22 seconds. Bo smashed that time what by the nearly hell? a tenth of a second. Along with his mythical athletic feats, Nike helped turn Bo Jackson into a sports megastar. And the slogan, Bo Knows, transcended into a pop culture phenomenon. Bo Knows, Bo boy. starred in both football and baseball. Still the only person to be both an NFL and MLB All-Star. Oh, he's in both. There has never been an athlete able to hit 500-foot home runs and bust 90-yard-plus touchdowns other than Bo. Yeah. Even though his career was abruptly shortened by a hip injury, Bo knows, Damn. and everybody else knows, that there will never be anybody like Bo. You know some guys here, they're just very uh, genetically gifted, and obviously they work hard, so for him to be able to be on a professional level for both baseball and NFL that is like absolute gift and hard work and just a mixture of everything and they're complete different sports as yeah, well yeah they're so opposite it's not like yeah. oh they've got similarities like they're so opposite because he's not out here tackling or anyone or getting tackled yeah a shame on the injury man yeah. I'm sure his career could have just kept flourishing mm. Peppers the Wilson, North Carolina product was a three-sport star in high school, lettering in football, basketball, and track. Unblockable at defensive end, Pep also played running back in high school, scoring 46 touchdowns in his career. <laughs> Peppers attended the University of North Carolina and was selected as a freshman All-American. The greatest testament to Peppers' athleticism was walking on to the legendary UNC basketball team Jeez. while still dominating on the football field. That's Julius mad. Peppers is one of two people to ever play in both an NCAA Final Four and a Super Bowl. Peppers was a large man, measuring in at six foot seven inches oh and weighing two hundred and eighty-five pounds. He's a tower. Drafted by the Carolina ah. Panthers, quarterback Derek Anderson was quoted as saying, "Julius might be the biggest person I've ever seen. <laughs> I think God really built him like this." Yeah, that's mad. And said, "Here, don't mess it up. You don't make this list <laughs> by just being big." However, and Julius ran a ridiculous four point seven forty yard dash at the combine. As soon as he arrived in the NFL, Peppers produced a Rookie of the Year season, notching multiple three-sack games. In one of his greatest plays ever, Julius Peppers bent what was imaginable, catching Joey Galloway from behind in a full sprint. Not only did Peppers run stride for stride with a receiver, he ran with the fastest receiver in the NFL. Peppers was an anomaly. He's a beast. the only player in NFL history to record 100 sacks and 10 interceptions in a career. Players rave about Peppers' ability to produce late into his career. He just seems to be ageless. Peppers dominated the game with such mobility and size, his name became synonymous with freak of nature. Randy Moss. Some of these guys are going to definitely be freaks of nature because just the size, six foot seven is crazy. But they got some mad talent though. Mad talent. They're not just size, they got talent. And right, they're built as well. Yeah. They're not like skinny, <laughs> they're like big and tall. So that's like the perfect combination because the taller you are, the harder it is to be built, like just generally speaking. No player on this list struck fear into the opposition like Randy Moss. Moss jumped over defenders to pull down passes and effortlessly glided past defenders on his way to the end zone. When asked who most resembles his game, Moss replied with, Nobody. It's the correct response. Just me, Moss. Leading up to the draft, Randy posted one of the most stunning workouts of all time, walking off to a collective jaw drop from the crowd. Moss showed off 4.2 speed, combined with a 50-inch vertical at 6'4", slipping to 21st 
first overall pick in the 1998 in. draft. Randy Moss didn't need time to groom, immediately making everybody pay for passing on him. His first game was his first of 39 multi-touchdown games. Stop. It didn't take long before defensive backs were giving Moss miles of space at the line of scrimmage. In fear, he would run past them like they were standing still. His 17 <laughs> touchdowns as a rookie is still an NFL record. His play coined a phrase heard at every playground. You got mossed. You don't <laughs> you got that would... Hey, that, that defo was on the Can't playground. Not, Anyone not. that got done, you got mossed. You got mossed, honey. I'll <laughs> muscle a catch over any other player. Moss possessed massive hands that could each pluck the ball at the highest point individually. A scoring machine. Moss was the leading receiver for two of the greatest offenses of all time. Always the catching them. The 1998 Vikings and the 2011 Patriots. Ah. Bob Pruitt, his head coach at Marshall, once said, however fast you think he is, he's faster than that. Randy knew he was the best athlete on the field. Once telling his QB, just throw it above his head. He can't jump with me. Moss even had a signature <laughs> shoe line with Jordan called the Super oh, wow. Freaks. <laughs> Fitting. Larry Allen. Yo, this guy looks NFL beast. Ever. Larry Allen was an unknown out of Sonoma State. Allen dominated Division II football with legendary stories of him knocking defenders unconscious with his blocks. Leveling any the player hell? in his way followed him into the NFL draft. Many pundits scoffed at these tales, saying his success was due to the lack of competition he faced. At 6'3", 325 pounds, oh Allen my possessed God, that's a lot of weight and versatility to succeed at all five offensive line positions. You know what, with NFL, yeah. What I like is there's a variety of sizes. Like no matter you know you know like basketballers, they're all ninety nine percent of them has yeah. to be super tall. You can't make it to the top. Mm -hmm. Like here, you know, there's guys who look overweight, but then just a lot bigger than there's guys who are tall and slim. But then there's people. That, do you know what I mean there's a mix of sizes? There's a position for every physical size in a way. Mm -hmm. But what I like as well is the quarterbacks are just massive. But they're light on their feet. Mm. So this guy, like they said, he's huge, but he's light. And I've seen a couple uh, YouTube videos of uh, quarterbacks performing. And no matter how big they are, they're just as nimble as me or you. Like, they have even, to be, even more they nimble. They can't be big and not be able to move. Exactly. Yeah. In that position, they have to catch the guy who's of course. not big and who's so quick, right? Yeah. Yeah. Drafted by the Dallas Cowboys, Allen was forced into the starting lineup because of injury and never looked back. It's always Allen injury. Became arguably the greatest offensive lineman in NFL history. A dominant force unlike How anything big? the league has ever seen. <laughs> so Larry big, Allen was able to bench press over 700 pounds. What? And squat 900. In one of the most ludicrous performances, 36-year-old nah, Larry Allen insane. did 43 reps of 225 on the bench press in a Pro Bowl skills challenge. That's in the crown of NFL strong strongest man. But he wasn't only just big and strong. In a playoff game, Allen ran down a would-be pick six from a linebacker. Afterwards, nobody was talking about the magnitude of the play, but instead, Allen's absurd athleticism. There aren't stats to compare offensive linemen, but there isn't any doubt the impact that Larry Allen had in his career, riding roughshod over any defender he went against by being bigger, stronger, and faster. Deion Sanders. Neon Dion, or Primetime, if you prefer. Primetime, boy. was the most gifted like player on the field. Sanders played for nine different professional sports teams across two different sports. The and is the only player to play in both a World Series and a Super Bowl. FSU coach Bobby Bowden refers to Prime as the measuring stick for athletic ability. Sanders lettered in track, football, and baseball during his time with FSU. Sanders is not as physically imposing as others on this list, but not many come close to the endless things Dion could do. Dion moved with world-class track speed and could effortlessly change direction on a whim. Sanders shut down prolific receivers every week. People didn't realize that he didn't go to one NFL training camp in his first six seasons because it was baseball season. In 1996, <laughs> Sanders became the first modern player to be a starter on both sides of the ball, playing receiver for the Dallas Cowboys as well. Sanders is one of two people to score a touchdown six different ways. Wow. Dion doubled as a kick returner and was so dangerous the league colluded to never kick to him again. Another fabled story of the NFL. Sanders showed up to the combine to run the 40 and immediately after got a ride back to the airport, knowing he cemented his spot. There may be others on the list, but there can only be one primetime.
Prime Calvin time, Johnson. I love that. While many people didn't get to see what type of player Calvin Johnson was going to be in college, in an offense that rarely passes, the NFL knew what was coming. Johnson has an athletic profile that was aptly described by his nickname, Megatron. Yo, Megatron's a nickname. That is, to be called a Transformer, especially one of the top ones, you are at peak yeah. performance. You're, and bear in mind, he's getting called that by other NFL guys. Megatron. Well, he nuts. is next level. These guys are like made in labs or something. Yeah. These guys, Hence man. why they're called super freaks. Yeah. Human, <laughs> like the bad guy in a scary movie. Most 6'5, 240 pound receivers built their game around boxing out opponents at the catch point to secure passes. But Calvin Johnson regularly blew by secondaries with 4.3 speed. Calvin is still the only 6'5 player to run under 4.4 at the combine. Six, five. Scout Gil Brandt claimed he had the best broad jump he's ever seen. Almost 12 feet. Defenders had no chance in covering Johnson's freakish blend of length and speed. Calvin is in the conversation of the greatest receivers ever. Even though he retired at age 30 after just nine seasons. One particular season in 2012. Calvin Johnson shattered the single season receiving record by over 100 yards. Teams were doubling and even triple covering Johnson in an offense without many other threats, and it didn't matter. Calvin Johnson was a monster and an aberration, combining Greek god physical traits with soft hands to snag the ball anywhere within an acre of him. Injuries and inept franchise relationships shortened Calvin's career, Stop. but they weren't short on miraculous moments. Herschel Walker. The University of Georgia running back is recognized as one of the most dominant college football players ever, and his story to success is just as interesting. Growing up poor without access to weights, Walker would do push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, and dips at the house. Pretty typical, except he did them in sets of thousands. He was the pinnacle of athletics in Georgia, winning what four state hell? championships in track including shot put he was the fastest and the strongest person around you know what he although he was at a disadvantage from you know his upbringing he didn't let that be an excuse to not be where he wanted to be you know with his dreams the guy had done sets in the thousands that's why he's showing that rock lee and bruce yeah lee. yeah bruce lee style like yeah. that's nuts as soon as he arrived at UGA, he became the centerpiece of their football program. Defenders were unable to bring Walker to the ground, possessing the ability to bounce off would-be tacklers and track speed to leave defenders in his dust. Yeah, he's off. After three Heisman-worthy seasons, Walker won it in his junior season. He amassed over 50 touchdowns in three years, wow. going pro into the upstart USFL. Walker Jeez. was the best player by a large amount during its three-year existence. Once the USFL folded, Walker moved on to the Dallas Cowboys Cowboys, already a living legend. While he didn't have as much success in the NFL, he enjoyed unprecedented running back longevity, playing another 12 seasons. During wow, this span, that's a lot. he only missed four games. Walker wow. retired the only player to get 4,000 yards three different ways, running, receiving, and returning. As if the beating he took in the NFL wasn't enough, at age 48, Walker pursued a career in the MMA. He went on to no fight way. two fights and won them both. What the hell? A true testament to his physical freakiness. Jim Brown. <laughs> Most <laughs> people know who Cleveland legend Jim Brown is, arguably the greatest football player of all time. But what most people don't know is he's also one of the greatest lacrosse players to ever live. Lacrosse. Saying himself that he was probably better at lacrosse than football. Brown lettered in six sports in high school and four sports at Syracuse before going on to be a three-time NFL MVP and the only player to average 100 yards rushing in his career. Good footwork. Brown still holds the record for most three touchdown and four touchdown games in NFL history. No, they can't catch him. to be brought down and unwilling to step out of bounds. Jim Brown reset every standing NFL record in nine short seasons. Ray Lewis called him the most dominant player to ever step on any field. Master of the fly sweep, Brown could reverse field and run away from opponents, sidestep would-be tacklers, or physically impose his will in head-on collisions. He had very good technique. That's what carried him. His no technique. one could take him down. Yeah, his footwork. It like, looks like he's going to drop and he's just spinning them away. Yeah, so, so you can't touch me. Literally. <laughs> Marcus Allen once said, Forget running backs. It's like every player is measured against Jim Brown because he was the touchdown, the measuring stick. He was <laughs> the greatest player that ever lived.
Jim Big Thorpe. words. Jim Thorpe is the pioneer athlete. The modern history of athletic. Not gonna lie, I think this is the first white guy on the list, I have to say. Because <laughs> everyone in it, everyone yeah. else is African American. Yeah. Athletics begins with Thorpe, not only a superstar NFL player, Captain America. The sport, and Jim Thorpe was the best at it from 1910 to the 1930s. A decathlon is an Olympic event that encompasses 10 different competitions all rolled into one. Damn. Created in 1911, Thorpe was the first person to ever receive gold at the event. The hell? The ability to win multiple skills specific Olympic medals and dominate at the NFL level is deserving of this list already. But Thorpe did it without training as he interchanged between the MLB and football. Former president Dwight Eisenhower broke a huge secret about Thorpe. He never practiced. He what? showed up and did things better than everybody else in his first time. So he was a natural talent. Had everything, including World Ballroom Dancing Championships. To understand his worth to football, look no further than the award given to the best college defensive back in the country each year, which is appropriately named the Jim Thorpe Award. You know, some people just, you know what it is? I think if you've got very good like eye coordination and certain coordinations in your body, you will just naturally have an ex ex an um, advantage over the normal person. And so some people are just good at like, I know some people who I used to work with who, like, they don't practice certain sports, but they're just very good at other sports. And it's like they don't play it. It's just their eye coordination and their certain traits just allow them to be good at that sport automatically without practice. So let alone imagine if they practice. I think it's all down to you know, physical and anatomy as well, because you can't just, no one can just go to NFL. Yeah, of course. You yeah, need yeah. to have power and speed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't have a person that's good at playing snooker and just go play NFL overnight. Yeah, no way. Yeah. No way. So I think there's a lot to it. To get to that level, yeah. Yeah. For sure. A Native American from Oklahoma. The legend of Jim Thorpe has grown through generations because of his impact and excellence during that the modern day athletics. Thorpe became a legend whose tale will be told for years to come. Wow. Vernon Davis. For a long time, tight ends in the NFL were thought of as an extension of the offensive line. Utility blockers that played their role within the offense. Once the likes Yo. of Tony Gonzalez and Keller Winslow Sr. infiltrated the NFL as receiving threats, it was only a matter of time before someone like Vernon Davis came along. Davis absolutely dominated on the field at Maryland, while he also showing bully. his physical prowess. But before Davis left Maryland, he had set a school strength record for tight ends in bench press, squat, and power clean. But Davis didn't show what he was truly capable of until the NFL Combine. Vernon Davis wowed teams, clocking under 4.4 on the 40, leaping Duh. over 40 inches, and broad jumping nearly 11 feet, six foot three and over 250 pounds. Davis's combine numbers were the only thing people talked about through draft night. He was drafted sixth overall by the San Francisco 49ers. 2009 was Vernon's breakout year, where he tied the season record for touchdown receptions by a tight end with 13. Davis was too fast, and he had too much leaping ability for linebackers and was yeah, far too them. big and strong for defensive backs to handle at the catch point. Davis moved and caught the ball like a wide receiver but possessed offensive lineman power. Ooh. In Davis's illustrious career, he set the playoff tight end single game receiving record, oh, that was won a clean. Super Bowl with the Broncos, and was named to an all-pro team. They left there him on the floor. There may be a tight end <laughs> for Davis's physical prowess Damn. and athletic ability again. So NFL freaks of nature, some pretty laboratory built people in there they were experiments yeah they were experiments that were successful yeah became... very successful <laughs> my test, god they were like test dummies no honestly they performed so well they did things that you would think people are capable of doing it's just and this last guy that we just saw he's just flicking his opponents like don't touch me <laughs> and they're flying as well get out of here just top level athletes yeah like top level athletes yeah Guys, thank you so much for recommending the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. More videos like this uh, coming. Just keep commenting them below. For now, peace out. Bye.